Hey guys, Jared with Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're going to be tying a wicked cool mouse pattern. Um, probably one of the uglier mouse patterns out there, but also the most effective. We're going to tie the Moorish Mouse. Moves a ton of water, catches a ton of fish, and we're going to get started on this thing right now. Alright guys, so in the vise today, I have a Gamakatsu B10S in a size 1. And for thread, I'm going to use GSP100 denier. Um, I like to use a wide gap hook like this. It just increases your hookup rate, especially when we're going after big predatory trout. Um, so the first thing we're going to do here is tie in our tail. And for a tail, I'm just going to use a rabbit zonker strip. I'm going to measure it so it's about eh, one and a half times the length of hook shank. And then I'm going to prep it by cutting the hair off the strip. All right, so I've prepped that. I've cut the hair off and I've left a little tuft at the end there. So that's going to cut down on the weight of this tail, but it's still going to give us give us a lot of movement here. So I'm going to put that in right on top of the hook shank. Um, make sure we don't go too far into our hook shank. We're going to spin hair on top of this, so we don't want to get that in the way. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit like on this video. Hit the bell notification so you're notified of all of our future fly tying videos. And make sure you're subscribed as well so you don't miss anything. Make sure your hook is fully seated every time. That didn't fully seat. There it is. So we're going to put the foam back in here, and this is what's going to keep the fly floating pretty high and also create a wake. So I've used a cutter, the Moorish Mouse Cutter, which is super convenient, and then I'm trimming it to size right now. And then I'm just going to take my scissors and create, you know, a nice tie-off point here. So I don't want to put too much bulk in the back. What we want to avoid is a bump there. So just want to take some some of this uh, foam out of here and then we're going to create a nice clean point to tie in and press that down make sure it's all the way down and then the next thing we're going to do is just take our LK or deer hair whichever you prefer I'm using LK hair today and we're going to start creating the body so like I said we're going to take a chunk about the width of a fat, fat pencil and just come in here I like to grab it by the tips and then just flick out pick out um, if you have a comb you can use a comb too um, I don't typically use a comb I don't know why mostly because I lose them but that's pretty good and then what we'll do here is take a quick stack in my hand get our tips relatively even and they are and then we'll take a measurement and then I'll cut it to length so take my measurement then come back here pinch with my fingers and get a nice even cut and that's ready to tie in and right about here um, we want some of these butts in here but we don't want an excess amount of butts um, trying to create flotation without too much bulk we're gonna trim most of it out but you know th the more work you can do now the better so I'm just going to flare that out, spin that around, and then because this foam is here, I'm going to use my hand to kind of rotate that around. So once I have it spread out and where I want it, I'm going to take a hard pull straight down, and then I'm going to come through here, and then bring my thread through. A couple of wraps in front, this thing's not going anywhere. So the other thing I like to do here is just take out some of this bulk. We don't need any bulk up here, and we can't trim it because we're going to have butt, uh, tips up here. So if you can just get rid of this now, it makes it a lot easier later. So same thing again, we're going to take another chunk of elk hair, deer hair, whatever you have, and we're just going to keep creating this body. All right, so I've combed out most of my under hair, um, taking a measurement here, got my tips pretty well aligned, and then I'm just going to cut that to length and tie it right in. Same thing we're doing before. Two loose wraps, pull, and it'll rotate around. And then we're going to push this back. We're going to stack these pretty tight. Like I said, we're going to want some bulk in here for flotation. And the more you can get in there, the better, to a degree. And then come in here and take this out again. You'll see when we get to the end what that accomplished there. So I've taken some wraps in front. And if you lay a thread base like I'm doing right here, um, that's what's going to allow you to stack this. You'll actually push the thread back. 
You can use your fingers, you can use a pen, there's a couple different tools that are made specifically for it. If you can get your whip finish tool over the eye of the hook, that works as well. So same thing, grab another chunk. Once you have your measurement, um, you can more or less just cut these to length without even measuring on the hook. You'll get a good eye for it. And to tell you the truth, honestly, it's probably not that imperative. Um, this fly is super messy anyway. And if it's ugly, it still fishes. So come back in here and pack this in. You'll realize you have a little bit more room on your shank there. If you keep packing these back, you just create more room for, to tie in here. And almost the more bulk you can get in here, the more material you can get in here, the better, to a degree. We have room for about one more here. All right, so we're going to put our last chunk in here. And I'm going to make sure that I don't trap any of these other fibers that I have. And I'm just going to get this last piece in there, flare it, and rotate it. Where it's, when it's near the hook eye here, that hook eye can kind of interfere with how this stuff rotates around the hook. So you may need to help it out with your fingers a little bit. And that looks really good to me, actually. There we go. Cool. So because we're going to pull foam over this, we want to make sure that this here is pretty tight to the hook eye. Um, we don't want any of this interfering with tying a leader on and tying our foam down. So just get rid of anything that's in the way of the hook eye. And we can pack this a little bit and kind of push it back. And that should give us a little bit more room. There we go. Let's pull all this back, wiggle your thread through, and get it behind that hook eye. The, ni the nice thing about GSP too is if you do trap anything, you just pull that thread tight and it cuts off most of the stuff that's in the way. Um, it can be a hard thing too when you're trying to tie in materials and you don't want to cut them off. Okay, so we have all of our deer hair, elk hair, whatever you chose to use on here. Um, so essentially what we need to do is split this hair, um, pull it to the sides, and then pull the foam over. So what I'm going to do is grab a bodkin and just create a part right down the middle. Yeah. And honestly, it doesn't matter as long as you get most of it to the sides here. And then we're just going to pull our foam through and it'll split it pretty well. You see, it's mostly even on both sides. So that's pretty good. We did our job there. So pull that stuff out of the way. And then we're going to throw a loose wrap over this foam. Make sure it's in position. Make sure our thread wrap is right where we need it. And then I'm just going to pull tight. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to take a look here at the hook eye and make sure nothing's trapped. So I'm going to get my head in the way here. And I'm just putting wraps in front of that eye. So that's pretty much it. I'm just going to get in here, throw a couple whip finishes. And like I said, GSP should be able to cut anything that I trap there. So pull tight, get rid of that. And then again, come in here. Anything that's under here is not going to do us any good. So we just get rid of that. Cut that to length. And then we're going to come under here and we're going to start trimming this thing out. So broad, broad um, scissor strokes first, and then we'll clean it up. You can use a razor blade. Um, but basically, we just want to come in here and get out most of the bulk, and then we'll trim it a little bit better. Okay, so I took this thing out of the vise. It's a lot easier to rotate this and see what's going on. Um, I'm just going to come in here. And honestly, at this point, it's fishable. I just want to make it look good. I like to come up here a little bit, um, keep my scissors at like a 45 degree angle, and just come in here and come up the sides a little bit and do the same thing on this side. I'm going to do it from this angle here.
All right. It'd be really helpful if I had a vacuum. Get rid of all this junk. Um, I don't like anything sticking back here, so I'm just going to take that out. Honestly, this, like I said, this is fishable here. We can, uh, we can trim this for about an hour and perfect it, but just trying to clean it up a little bit. We do want to make sure that this rides pretty well in the water. Um, you're going to be skating this thing and pulling it. So that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to put this back in the vise and just finish up the fly real quick. So guys, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to come in here and just for aesthetic reasons, more or less, trim that out so it's a little rounded um probably not necessary but that's it that's the moorish mouse super simple mouse super effective floats really well skates really well catches big rainbows catches bass it's a solid fly guys give it a try fish it hard and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.